Hello, Wolfpack. And this is the Roto VR Explorer. And it might just be a game changer. Hello, Wolfpack, and welcome to a very exciting video where I get a first look at the Roto VR Explorer, a chair that is so much more than a chair. You see, the concept of this is very simple. When I turn my head in VR, this chair will turn with me. There's no more need for joystick turning, no more need to use my legs. We're basically entering the uh, prime Wally human era here. Well, then what do you want to do? I don't know, something. Before I jump into the review of this chair, Here's the information that you are definitely going to need to know. The Roto VR Explorer retails for $800, and that is a hefty price. Now, this actually isn't their first time that they've entered the chair in VR market. They had a version one, and that actually retailed for over $2,000. So, I mean, put those against each other, and the $800 seems more manageable, but that is still a hefty sum for something that just turns you in VR. So that cost is going to keep out a lot of potential buyers, but those of you that are still interested, let me tell you a little more about this thing. It all starts with this Pokeball looking puck. You see, this is the magic behind the Roto chair. Now, when I press this button up here, it's gonna change the mode, flashing gray lights, and suddenly, when I turn this, the chair is going to turn accordingly. And uh, it works a lot better when this is attached to your headset, so let me do that for you. Here is my Frankenstein Quest 3, and I'm just going to attach this puck right on top. Easy peasy. And then I'm going to pop a squat right here on the chair. Hi, everybody. My Quest 3 is on. I'm switching to the turning mode. And suddenly, as I turn, the chair is going to turn with me. It's really as simple as that. As I look towards something, oh, quick to my right. Huh, look at that. I'm over there. Wait, something's behind me. Boom. Look at that. The chair turns. It really does feel like some sort of magic. So all you need to do is turn your head naturally how you would in the game. If you want to turn left, you just look a little to the left. If you want to turn right, you look to the right. Now, a bigger turn will obviously make the chair spin significantly faster. And this thing can actually go pretty dang quick. Now, there is a way to change the speed. Let me show you. So when you press both the buttons here, that is going to change the speed. But I found that it doesn't work with the turning mode. This seems to be just kind of calibrated to how you're turning. But there's a second mode where you can turn based purely on button presses, uh, and that allows you to change the speed. There's three beeps for full speed, one for slow, and so on. But it doesn't seem like the turning mode actually has a speed response, which does play into what is going to be my biggest downside for the roto chair. Jeremy Clarkson once said that speed isn't what kills you. It's coming to a sudden halt, that's what gets you. And that is the biggest problem with the roto chair. When I turn, it actually turns me pretty quickly and in the speed that I would like it to do, but the stopping, the stopping is kind of the issue here because you see, when I turn and then stop, there's this almost whiplash effect where you go and then, huh, just kind of stop. And your body wants to keep moving because of momentum, but the chair is stopped, meaning that suddenly your body's continuing, but then you're whipping back. And that is kind of the issue here. It's not the speed, it's not the turning, it's the coming to a stop. And you can kind of get it to come to a slower stop, but if you're going fast, that whipping will make you feel a little bit nauseous. I would like it if it came to a slower stop, but that at that point, when you wanna get your head to a certain spot, you're gonna kinda of miss the mark. So it's a weird trade-off, I'm not sure how to fix that, but that's the biggest issue here. This chair was really designed to eliminate um, motion sickness, right? Uh, so you don't have the joystick turning, which gets a lot of people, you don't have to resort to snap turning, it allows you to stay immersed in the game. But when you're doing this, and you're turning quick, and then wanna kinda of come back, it's that whiplash, that stopping, that, that kind of negates that effect and gives you a bit of motion sickness. It's the one downside outside of that price that I've really found with this chair. And trust me guys, this chair can really whip you around. I'm gonna hand this puck to my trusty assistant here behind the camera, and she is going to turn this thing violently. And you will see that this chair can definitely spin you around. Now obviously this is not the intended use case of this chair, but I'm just showing the violence of that stop when you do a sudden change of direction. It is 
Okay, that, thank you, that's great. It's uh, a little jarring. Obviously your head is not whipping that quickly normally, but uh, the possibility of doing a quick turn and then coming to a stop, it's a, it's a little wild, let me tell you. So you might be asking yourself, Wolf, why not a swivel chair, right? It's a, also a chair that turns, and that's true. Uh, and it's very comfy. Then it's probably a lot cheaper than that chair, but there's a caveat. The group at Roto actually did a lot of study. They, they really wanted to find a solution here. And one of the things they found is that people that were in swivel chairs when they were playing VR didn't actually turn. People don't like using their legs, okay? So when they were playing VR, they were still using the stick to turn just because it was easier. It was less effort, and effort is kind of the key with the Roto chair. They also found that, you know, when you're spinning, your head is turning before your body. You're not gonna hit that exact point where you wanna stop. Uh, so there's, there's some effort involved and everything's different and the way your body sways and your legs are detached from your head, there's gonna be some motion sickness there involved. So yes, this is a big leap from a simple swivel chair, but it does solve some of those issues that people were not using the swivel chair for. But there is actually more to this chair than just turning, okay? So let me just spin this puppy around here. On the back, you're gonna see some cable management. And there's actually a USB-C port right down here, if you guys can see that. That actually allows you to charge your Quest without uh, you know, having to plug into a wall, with being able to still use this. And as it turns, because this turns with the chair, the cable on your Quest, you're not gonna choke yourself out. So that does actually bring up the question of PC VR. And that's actually something the people at Roto have thought about, but it's not something that's been implemented yet. You see, if you're attached to a PC, say it's that wall, and you're turning, you're gonna choke yourself out as you spin and there's a cable. But they're actually introducing a cable system that will go under and through here, and you'll be able to use uh, VR, uh, PC VR headsets, as well as like steering wheels for racing games. And I see that being another really cool use case with this chair. Now, under the chair, you're gonna see this big little box here. That is actually a rumble pack. You need a Bluetooth enabled headset so it can uh, access the volume of the game. But this will actually give your chair a rumble. So when you're playing stuff, it'll go and you'll feel it. You'll become more immersed in the game. It's just added little stuff like that that really adds to the perceived value here. So to sum everything up, the Roto VR Explorer is an $800 chair that turns when you turn. It has definite use cases for those in VR, but is it something that I recommend? Well, me personally, I like to stand when I play VR. I never really got into the seated play style, but there are those who prefer to sit when they're playing or actually have to sit. Um, so it's definitely got its use cases for those individuals. Now, I personally wouldn't use this enough to justify the cost. But if you're someone that does play seated all the time, I can see it actually being a benefit, especially if you suffer from any sort of motion sickness. As long as you take your turns nice and slowly, even it out, I really do think this will benefit you from not having to use joysticks or not having to use your legs. But look, all of this comes down to the cost. $800 is a tough pill to swallow. So is it worth it to you? Now that's something I can't answer, but hopefully all the information you gained in this video, what you've seen, what I've said, it's gonna be enough for you to make an informed decision. Thank you, Wolfpack, for being here at my review. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin away now. Hello, Wolfpack. And this is the VR... <laughs> and suddenly, the magic will start. When I turn this puck... <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Thank you. So to sum everything up, is the... <laughs> You're laughing behind the camera. <laughs> Don't like my dramatics? <laughs>